Hello everybody, my name is 7-Eleven, and welcome to the fourth week of the UGBC. This week, we are battling Seamus, who is all the way from Ireland, and so this, this battle is going to be a little bit early in the day, and guys, I am absolutely, and I've said this once, I've said this a hundred times, I am terrified of everybody's draft, but I am most particularly scared of um of Seamus's draft in the uh, like the most the scariest draft in my division is Seamus hands down so let me tell you what he has he has a Mega Charizard X Azumarill Jirachi Mandibuzz Mamoswine Heliolisk Cofagrigus Tangrowth Hitmonlee Weezing Regirock and Scyther. So that is a an incredibly, incredibly scary team. I don't know how we let this happen. So Seamus I noticed that Seamus has a lot of tanky walls. There's Jirachi, can be, there's Mandibuzz, Cofagrigus, Tangrowth, Weezing, Regirock. Sometimes Mega Charizard X, but I, I doubt it. Uh, I doubt that Charizard will be um, a wall, per se. So, this is a really, really scary battle. Um, because I have a lot of offensive pressure. Presence. I have a lot of offense on my team. And so, hopefully, you know, we can do something about, about the, these walls. So, starting off, I said, you know what, uh, Seamus likes setting up with Mega Charizard X, and so I decided, you know what, let's, let's go with uh, Dawn Fan to start off, and I want this thing to be as bulky as possible, so there's the HP, there's the defense, uh, despite that, a Flare Blitz from Mega Charizard X will do about half. And uh, after one Dragon Dance, it'll, it'll, it does like 60 to 75%. Um, so, hopefully I can take one hit. There's the Rocky Helmet. And Earthquake will take care of, of Mega Charizard X. Um... Of course, the, the stone fan will also be really useful for going up against Jirachi and Heliolisk and Cofagrigus and Tangrowth and like most of his walls. So, um, Earthquake. Earthquake will hit the Mega Charizard X and the Jirachi and the Heliolisk and the uh, Red Jirachi. Uh, Ice Shard for priority. That's going to be extremely important for stuff that are fast and things that may be, um, what's the word? Focus Sashed. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, knockoff. Knockoff is going to be huge. Knockoff is going to be huge. It's going to do a lot of damage to the Jirachi. Um, an itemless Mamoswine is going to be a lot less scary. Um, knockoff is going to do a lot of, of damage to the Cofagrigus. Um, a, a, uh, an itemless Tangrowth is going to be a lot less scary. An itemless Weezing is going to be a lot less scary. An itemless Regirock, an itemless Scyther is going to be really a whole lot less scary. Poison Jab. Poison Jab is mostly there for two Pokemon, the Azumarill and the Tangrowth. So, that is Dawn Fan. Uh, unfortunately, Dawn Fan does not get reliable recovery, so I think that um, that something is going to die on my team, and then Dawn Fan will come in. Whatever Pokemon wants to hit me is going to get punished by the Rocky Helmet. I'm going to survive because of Sturdy, and then hopefully I can do a lot of damage back, if not kill that other Pokemon. So that is my plan for Dawn Fan. 
because they're because Don Fan does not get reliable recovery, Don Fan is most likely just going to be traded for something. But if it can be traded for a big wall or a threat for the re for the rest of my team, then you know what? I'll take it. So that's Don Fan. You're gonna be really important for a potential victory. So next I have Nito King. Now I was playing with Nito King a lot. Scarfed physical, scarfed special, uh, life orb physical. I decided to go with life orb special. <coughs> now sure, um, at maximum speed, Mega Charizard will be faster. Um, Azumarill might KO with an Aqua Jet. Jirachi will be faster. Mammoth Swine, if it's Scarfed, will be faster. Heliolisk will be faster. But a lot of things won't be faster, such as Tangrowth, for which I have Sludge Wave. Cofagrigus, for which I have Shadow Ball. Um, you know, like I said, Ma Mammoth Swine will only outspeed if it's Choice Scarf. You know, Fire Blast will be nice. So... And, and then I have Earth Power for the same reason I have Earthquake on Dawn Fan for the Mega Charizard, for the Jirachi. Um, if I can predict a Roost for, with the Mandibuzz, Earth Power. So, um, that that's my plan for Nidoking. Hopefully Nidoking can put in a lot of work. But we'll see. We'll see. Next, we have Kabutops. Now, like I said before, Seamus has a lot of physical attackers. Mega Charizard, Azumarill, Jirachi, Mammoth Swine, Hitmonlee, Regirock, Scyther. Most of his draft is physically offensive. So hopefully Kabutops can come in safely, fairly safely, on a physical hit. Maybe an Aqua Jet from Azumarill. Um, maybe a Flare Blitz from Charizard. <coughs> you know, something like that. And then um, with Weak Armor, with Weak Armor, uh, Kabutops will, will get uh, that speed boost by one. And that's going to be really helpful, you know, if I'm running Jolly 80 speed. Now if I'm running Jolly 120 speed because of the speed boost, then I have a chance of, of outspeeding Mega Charizard and Azumarill and Jirachi and Mandibuzz. You know, I'll outspeed, I'll outspeed anything unless Jirachi is scarfed. I'll speed tie with a speedy Mammoth Swine. With uh, with a choice scarf, Mega Charizard X will still outspeed with with one Dragon Dance. So I'm really scared of that. So yeah, that that's my plan there. Knock off is going to be really really important. Rock Slide is going to just destroy souls like the Mega Charizard, uh, like the Scyther. Uh, Waterfall just for stab. And uh, I have Low Kick. Low Kick is going to be nice. Um, low Kick will do a lot to the Mammoth Swine and the Heliolisk and the Regirock. So that is my plan there. Hopefully, Kabutops can be a late game sweeper. But we'll see. I, I was really considering putting a Choice Band on. But I really want... I really want to be able to switch up my moves, and um, I think that it will pay off. Sure, Life Orb will be whittling myself down, even after I take a weak armor, you know, a physical hit. So, uh, Kabutops, you know, your health will go down pretty quickly, but hopefully you can put in a lot of work before that. Next... I, I was really scared of, um, you know, I was scared of uh, a lot of these walls that he has, especially the, the Mandibuzz, the Cofagrigus, 
tangrowth wheezing. So here's a palm. I'm sorry, ambi palm. So he, my my plan with ambi palm is to go switcheroo choice scarf. If I can do a switcheroo onto a Pokemon and give it a choice scarf, especially if it is a a wall of a Pokemon like like the Cofagrigus or the Mandibuzz, then that can give me a an advantageous situation, hopefully. Hopefully, uh, it, that, that would be really great for me. So, Fake Out is going to be really powerful because of Technician. Frustration is going to be, you know, as powerful as ever. Um, if I'm in a bad situation, I can still U-turn. I'm thinking that Ambipom can still put in a lot of work with Choice Scarf U-turn as a revenge killer. Because at 115 speed and a choice scarf, you're, you're not going to be outsped by anything except for priority. So that's Ambipom. Uh, like I said before, Seamus has a lot of walls. He has a lot of physical attackers. And hopefully Ambipom can take care of at least one of the walls and still put in a good bit of damage. So... Moving along, next we have Mew, and Mew is here again for all these physical attackers like the Mamoswine and the Azumarill and the Jirachi Hitmonlee. So I have a Will-O-Wisp here, hopefully to catch anything off guard. Earthquake is going to be really key here in my victory here. I have Knock Off, and I also have Toxic, because there's something called Cofagrigus and Mandibuzz. Cofagrigus and Mandibuzz, they don't do a whole lot of physical offense. Um, I guess the biggest extent would be Mandibuzz's foul play and or knockoff. Um, but Mandibuzz is still good with Air Slash. And Cofagrigus likes to, likes to do like, um, likes to do Toxic Spikes or Will-O-Wisp Hex. So Cofagrigus is going to be pretty scary there. So I'm carrying Toxic as well as Will-O-Wisp. That Toxic is for the Mandibuzz and or Cofagrigus. And as long as I stick to that plan, hopefully everything will turn out all right. Knockoff is going to be nice. Earthquake is going to be nice. Uh, so hopefully Mew can whittle stuff down and be really annoying with Knockoff and survive for a while with leftovers and then Mew will just have to go down and so for our final Pokemon we have our sweeping Surperior with Dragon Pulse, Giga Drain, Hidden Power Ice and Leaf Storm so what I was thinking whenever I built this Surperior I was thinking well what if Mega Charizard gets one if not two um dragon dances and then just starts flare blitzing and roosting what if um every what if what if something bad goes wrong that's my my big fear here what if something bad goes wrong what if scyther gets a couple swords dances and wants to bug bite you know what i'm trying to say so i have the focus sash here which hopefully can save save superior um, if he brings Stealth Rocks, I, I, as you can see, I did not bring any Stealth Rocks of my own, and I don't have any way to get rid of my own, of opposing Stealth Rocks or other entry hazards. So, um, the Focus Sash may be a bad idea. As you saw in week one against David, I brought a, uh, a Focus Sash Ambipom, and that didn't work out. So... Um, that's why I've, that's, that's another reason why I have Giga Drain, because, um, hopefully I, I can set up a, a nice strong Leaf Storm, or maybe Giga Drain straight away, and hopefully get back up to full just for that Focus Ash. Now, Dragon Pulse, that's going to be mainly for the Charizard X. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, but... 
Giga Drain is going to be a lot, a lot of damage against the Azumarill. Unless it's Sap Zipper, actually. Oh, that could be bad. In that case, I'm going to make you Hidden Power Poison. And, um... Yeah, so, so... Actually, Jirachi doesn't do a whole lot to us now. Um... Maybe I'll do Hidden Power Electric. I think I may do Hidden Power Electric. Oh gosh, this is a, this is a bit of a toss-up, guys. Because, um... I had Hidden Power Ice for the Mandibuzz and the Tangrowth. Um, who could potentially wall me. Um... Yikes, guys. So, if I do Hidden Power Poison, then that can hit the Azumarill and the Tangrowth, but it won't do anything to the Jirachi. If I do Hidden Power Ice, then Azumarill and Jirachi, uh, you know, may, may stop Superior Sweep. If I do Hidden Power Electric for the Azumarill and the Mandibuzz, then I'm open for Tangrowth or Jirachi to come in. Oh boy, guys. You know, I think for now... I think for now I'm going to keep it with Hidden Power Poison and just hope that Leaf Storm does a lot of damage to Jirachi. If that's what it comes to. If that's what it comes to. So that is my team. Um... In my opinion, we don't have a really great matchup against Seamus' team. So, I'm pretty scared about this battle, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I, I have two OU, two UU, an RU, and an NU. Seamus likes to bring a lot of stuff. Um, I think, yeah, Seamus has brought everything on his in his draft so far you know across the across the last three weeks Seamus has brought everything in his draft so he likes to to mix things up he likes to use you know Pokemon from all the tiers um, so hopefully hopefully I can do something you know, against Seamus here. And here's something really interesting, guys. Um, Seamus and I are tied. Yeah, you heard right. We are tied for second place in our division. Um, we are both two wins, one loss, with a positive four um, differential. So this is going to be a really hyped battle because this is going to be a battle, like, to determine like who 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 may be on on top later on so if you guys are going to root for the Pittsburgh Thunderbirds then hopefully you guys will come out and and show your support and uh I will have the battle up tomorrow if not Saturday so Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.